strange to have a hippo out here on the plains, but uh, they look so docile, but these guys are responsible for a lot of deaths in Africa. They have bad tempers. Okay. Okay guys, this is such a beautiful cheetah, she's in very good condition and you can just see everything about this cat, it's built for speed. Very long tail to counterbalance on a sharp turn, not carrying any excess weight, very lean and mean, a lot of muscle in the hind quarters. You see that's the drive, the back legs are giving the, the drive and uh, long ankles, lots of flexibility and they've got very good vision so she would see something a long way off so she's definitely looking for something to eat this time of day this is perfect for cheetah and the Serengeti is perfect habitat for cheetah you know, they're very vulnerable, running out of, they need a lot of space, especially the females. And uh, luckily we still have the Serengeti that provide these vast open plains for them. You can see she's got a very big chest, nice big lungs to provide enough oxygen for such acceleration up to 100 kilometers an hour which is really, really fast for a cat. So cheetah don't have the power to overpower their prey. To That's more lion that has strength and can. Cheetah have to suffocate, so they're holding, closing a windpipe, so they must be able to breathe through their noses for an extended period of time. While they're ha holding on, they must be able to breathe through the nose. Again, when we talk about animal markings, you can see there's a white tip on the tail. And that is mostly for identification from looking from the, the rear. I think we're going to wait at this termite mound and maybe she will go and rest on that for a little bit. Okay guys, in the spirit of 
uh, things globally, we will do some bush schooling today, just like homeschooling, just different. And um, last time we covered some animal names in Kiswahili. Yes. So, Mwalimu. Yes, my student. <laughs> <laughs> we are ready for you today. All right. <coughs> Welcome. And today we are also going to learn five major things that we are using in the bush into Kiswahili language. Hema. 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 Mm. This is tent. 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 Uh, Good. Uh, tent, we call it Hema. So not Nyumbani. Not Nyumbani. <laughs> that one is your your house. Yeah, your house. Yeah, this one is not a house. Huh? Yeah, house is Nyumba. Nyumba. Yeah, and Nyumbani is a place where people live. Ah, where yeah. you build your house is what we call Nyumbani. Mm. So our hema is in our Nyumbani. Yes, our hema is our Nyumbani. <laughs> Another thing is Jiko. Jiko. Jiko means a kitchen. A place where we used to cook our food. Chico. Yeah. Chico. I didn't know Chico. that. I thought Chico <laughs> is just the, the burner. Chico, it can be a house and also it can be a burner. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. A kitchen or but a burner? A place where we cook our food. Because if you have a burner on its own, then you put it somewhere without something to cover, your fire cannot go well. Mm. <laughs> Anything can happen. So you can have a jiko in your jiko? Yeah, you can have a jiko in your jiko. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It depends. Mm. In the kitchen, you can have gas cooker. Mm. Yeah. Jiko la gesi. Jiko la gas. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Third one is maji. Ah, uh, maji mm. safi. <laughs> maji, do you know it? Maji, I know this one. What is that? Water. Water. Excellent. Yeah. Water is Maji. And everywhere in the camp or wherever you are, you need Maji to it's cook, to drink, and to do other stuff, whether to wash your body. So we have Maji in the Jiko. We need Maji in the Jiko, otherwise we cannot cook mm. our food. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and the other one is Chakula. 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 Who knows what Chakula means? Chef, yes, Chef Alex just made us very nice Chakula. Very good. Chakula mm. means a food. Mm. Food, we call it Chakula in Swahili language. Last one is Moto. 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 Yeah, who knows? I think that's the one Carl asks for every morning with his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Hot. What is it? Hot. Mm, not Almost? really. <laughs> 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 Moto means fire. Yeah. But Minus hot, one. <laughs> something, when you put something into the fire, it will become hot. Mm. For example, hot water, Maji Moto. <laughs> That's you combine I'm two thinking. words. Mm. Ah. So, we need moto to cook our food. And sun? Jua. Jua, <laughs> not <laughs> moto. Not moto, <laughs> yeah. Jua. Jua. So maji moto is hot water. Maji moto is hot water, mm. yes. But moto is the fire. Moto is the fire. Got Understood? It. What a good teacher you are. You're welcome. Understood? Got it. Before we finish up, who can remind me, how do we call a tent? into Swahili language. Yes, Sally? Hema. Hema, excellent. Hema. Thank you. I'm glad I have her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Hema. you so much. Asante sana. And this is the end of our lesson today. Thank, Thank you, you Mwalimu. Okay, guys. So, uh, we've stayed with this cheetah throughout the afternoon and it looks like she's getting ready to attempt um, a kill. Now this is not her favorite food, wildebeest and zebra, but she would probably try and select a little one or there's some grants gazelle a little further, but she's, she's really not been in a good position all afternoon for Thompson's gazelle or something a bit smaller. 
but um, yeah, let's see what skills she has. It's got a lot to do with confidence, really. I'm sure she would manage, and then you know, would she be able to kill the wildebeest quickly enough before she gets kind of pushed off it? This is all, all the things that are going through her head at the moment, and she can't waste energy, so she won't really attempt a kill if she's not sure that she has a very good chance. Um, she's keeping her body fairly concealed, but nothing really at the moment. I mean, there's so many wildebeest that she can... All she has to do is separate one. We're going to try and stay a little bit ahead of her because they run so quickly that then otherwise you miss everything. So Once they make up their minds, it happens fairly quickly. But um, she'll do well to bring down an adult for the best. Normally if there's a coalition of a few brothers together or in the Mara there's even five or six cheetah together there, she's going into a bit of a stalking mode. We'll stay ahead of her. will give us our best chance, or she might try and get something that's up on the side of the herd. Wildebeest and zebra. Here. Zebra are very smart, and I don't think she'll go for zebra except if it's a little one. Let's see. Walking in here quite confidently, and you'll hear the wildebeest start snorting. And and uh, the bulls would kind of almost approach her and try and keep her out, while the females and the calves would go for safety. Because she has to suffocate to kill her prey, she has to be able to hang on to her prey until it's suffocated, which could be two or three minutes or so. Mm. There's also some ground gazelle here, not too far. But we'll give her a few options. The wildebeest have noticed her now, so she's not concealed anymore. Smart zebra will definitely start vocalizing. Wah, 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 wah. Walking right into the herd now, so we'll see what she'll probably try and cause a bit of chaos. And then let's see what happens. I would put my money on more on Grand Gazelle if she, if she would spot one. It doesn't make any sense for her to kill something that she can't feed on then afterwards. So she had a look at Grand Gazelle a bit earlier, but there were Hina quite close by, so she didn't take that risk. can clearly hear the energy going through the herd and vocalizing as a predator approaches. Okay guys, really exciting. She's got some Grons gazelles in her sights. Let's just see if she can get close enough to give uh, make an attempt. Stay out of her line of sight so we don't have an impact on proceedings at all. So let's see. She's 
still on the move. And she's going into stalking mode now, a bit more. Slower movement. She'll start using cover to see how close she can get. She has to be within a couple of hundred meters to have a good chance of bringing something down, especially Grand Scazal are quite large, so they must be definitely quick. Okay, she's going to sit down, so let's give her a minute. Talking mode now, guys. She's gone flat, ears are flat, and controlled movement. And there's some grants gazelle ahead. And this is exciting. Let's see, she's definitely a bit more serious now. So, we're gonna give them a little bit of a wider berth this time. No easy meals for her out here today. They have to do some work and she only has a couple of hours left. Kids corner time guys. And today, we're going to teach you how to use binoculars. These are binoculars, and they bring everything that's far away a little bit closer so you can see better. So very important to ask your dad to buy you some binoculars. So these binoculars are really handy, especially with Eland. Eland are very skittish and you can never get close enough with them. So I'm going to show you how to use the binoculars. First of all, you need to make sure that that your binoculars are set correctly. You still have young eyes, so you can just put it on zero. If your eyes are different, you adjust this one um, so you can see very nicely. Then you have a dial here in the middle, and this will bring your what you are looking at into focus or not. So you will see it. The focus will go from right in front all the way to far uh, at the back. So you have to adjust this to get it into focus. All right, guys, I'm going to have a look at some eland. They are far, far away. OK, guys, now you should have a tent and binoculars. Chat to you later. This little depression here is holding good water and surely they won't be here the whole year but yeah. you can see how she's very alert when she's drinking constantly looking around mostly for the other predators that that's around
she's still looking for something to eat, but there's not much out here at the moment. Nothing in her size, really. Bit of a dust bath. But I think we're going to leave her here. We still have a long way to go back to camp and uh, we don't want to interfere with her hunting. It's becoming crucial for her to bring something down today. And uh, we don't want to disturb any of that. So She's in good condition, looking good, not thirsty anymore. And I'm sure there will be a Thompson's gazelle coming past at some stage. What a privilege to spend time with this Serengeti cheetah. Beautiful. And uh, we wish her all the best. Strange to have a hippo out here on the plains, but uh, they look so docile, but these guys are responsible for a lot of deaths in Africa. They have bad tempers. Okay. Guys, we bumped in a, into a very nice breeding herd of buffalo. Difference between a breeding herd and those dugger boys that we saw before is this herd has all generations and cows with it, and these ones are far less dangerous. You know, they keep to their structure, very different structure, with the bulls on the outside of the of the breeding herd and then the young and the females more towards the center. You will see as we approach these buffalo that you will see that some of the bulls will approach us to stand their ground um, but generally they would try and get away. I'm just gonna go around them before we lose them completely. see the cattle egret flying that's a good indication of large mammals around especially buffalo and uh, it's so nice to see buffalo they tell you exactly the health of the ecosystem and to find a large breeding herd like this is, makes my heart really really feel good it means things are going well in the Serengeti Park Sport are doing a great job and um, yeah, this must be a few hundred if not 300. We'll, we'll give you a better look now. Sorry, we're just sneaking around them, staying a little bit low. Um, buffalo can't outrun anything so they generally stand their ground and you'll see the cattle egret on the backs. Again, we have a sideways approach and you'll see they'll approach us to protect themselves and they do respond to, they respond to some noise. There's an angry cow on this side but we will, and then they will turn away and you'll see the young buffalo there, they all part of the breeding herd. They lost their courage and but they know they can't outrun us. That's where little ones kind of get left behind. That's how lions get you grab a small bath below. It's great confusion. And uh, they grab a little one, kill it, and then leave it, and the herd, big herd will come back. But, um, wow, spectacular. Interesting thing about buffalo is just the, the calves can suckle through the hind legs while they're walking. It doesn't have to be from the side, like normal cows. You see they'll approach us again. Uh, they don't know what we are, but they do respond to sound. So let's see, here's a nice bull. This is all for protection. You see there's a couple of, there's a big bull here closest to us. He will generally stop and turn. Let's see. 
You can see he's right here in front. So that's the structure I was talking about. Protection around the outside and the weak and the, and the young. I just want to show you a nice bull standing his ground here. So, kind of not the best sight, uh, but very good hearing. Big ears hanging below their wounds. And I'll show you in a second how they respond to sound. But uh, we don't want to disturb them too much. Let's see, I'll show you how they would run and then turn back. Here's a bull facing us. You'll see a thick neck. Nice buff on him. Approaching us now. And then... Yeah, some brave cows here. Look at the cow coming. And then on sound, sound they'll respond. Just a couple of claps. Don't want them to get too confident, they will just flatten us, huh? Wow. Oh, there's one with amazing wide horns, one that I something I haven't seen before, right ahead. Very wide, turning and running. Here's a nice bull passing us again with the mud on his horns. A nice bull. You can see the thick neck. And, uh, wow! What a privilege to see such a breeding herd. They start snorting, and uh, they do. They do Keep their structure. Okay, guys. Wow, that is really, really incredible. Dust. They heavy things up to a ton. And uh, amazing to see them. Late afternoon, Serengeti, in the western side of the Southern Plains. Nice bull turning back. Smelling us now with the wind approaching them. And that should spook, spook them a bit. Wow, oh, there's another nice bull with his head held high. Oh, bull here, the muddy one. And, uh, see how they tend to rather stand their ground than run away because they're not the fastest thing. Look at this old boy. Nice horns on him. Yeah, lifting his head high. And he has been through the walls, so he doesn't even bother to run. He's but we're not here to harm them. Very nice afternoon light. Here's a young bull trying his luck. But he will lose his courage soon and go. Yeah, guys, uh, okay, let's let them be. Some mating going on there in the middle. You know, it's like a family show, but you know, it's nature. Okay, let them be. Another exciting day in the Serengeti. Wow, action packed. And we're slowly heading back to camp and we're taking a slow drive almost into the sunset towards Nabi Hill. And thanks for joining us. If you'd like to keep on watching, hit on the subscribe button on YouTube, then you'll get notifications and things like that whenever a new episode is ready and if you want to help out a little bit with diesel and our things here you can always hit the donate now button on the website and uh, we'll keep on bringing you Serengeti Show live